Ever since the first settlers arrived about 150 years ago, Idaho has been known as a pioneering state, a place where ambition and opportunity join. Shortly after the end of World War II, a new breed of pioneers came to the high desert plains, determined to help usher in the atomic age. A lot of the very educated people of this world made their way to this very small agricultural community and began doing wonderful science. Scientists discovered that when the nucleus of the uranium atom is bombarded by an atomic particle, the atom splits in two, releasing enormous amounts of energy in the process. Unfortunately, this nuclear energy was first introduced to the world in a devastating demonstration. Well, there's an old saying that uh, you never have a second chance to make a first impression. That's about what happened back in August of 1945 when President Truman authorized the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima with atomic bombs. It is a certain tragedy that uh, nuclear energy was introduced to mankind in the form of an explosion. However, that's the history. The Cold War lit up fire under the United States igniting great interest and inspiring substantial investments in scientific advances that would help America stay one step ahead of the Soviets. Ten years later, President Eisenhower foresaw the value of atomic power. He proposed a program called Atoms for Peace. And one of the principal driving uh, objectives was to see could we control this nuclear explosion so it happened a lot slower and use it to generate hot water and turn turbines and make electricity. But what we didn't do was advertise that. We didn't put the word out. And so the, the perception that people had in their mind tended to be much more linked towards the nuclear weapons. The Atomic Energy Commission was established in 1946 to oversee the development of atomic power for commercial purposes. Its first task, to identify a suitable location for testing nuclear reactors. They needed isolation. They needed a place that was not going to be very near other military areas. Uh, they needed a population nearby that might support a growing community of people who would be working at the site. They also needed sufficient electrical power, and they needed a place where there was plenty of water. When the Atomic Energy Commission chose the former Navy proving grounds near Idaho Falls for its National Reactor Testing Station, Competition was keen to become the AEC's new headquarters. In promotional materials, Idaho Falls built itself as the Atomic City. For some residents, however, atomic energy still was not the most comfortable thing. At first, I think people were a little afraid of the site. I remember as we would travel back and forth, you know, being all across the desert, we thought things at the site were always synonymous with the bomb. And that simply <laughs> is not possible or a reactor to blow up in any way like a bomb blows up. As you got out there and uh, you realized really what was going on, why those kinds of fears would fade away. Atomic energy has, has been a good neighbor to the city of Idaho Falls for, for many years. I think the site transformed Idaho Falls. The interest of the peoples from outside, you know, have stimulated our school system that certainly stimulated our economy, and the site is, is, is a blessing. In less than 20 years' time, 52 experimental reactors were built right here in Idaho. 52 reactors is a lot of reactors, and uh, no one else can come close to that. The site is famous for uh, building all kinds of reactors, you know, gas cool reactors and liquid water cool reactors. Uh, pressurized water reactors and boiling water reactors and heavy water reactors. This really represents the focus and foundation for what took place in nuclear power development throughout the world. The primary tests conducted at the Idaho site attracted atomic energy's best and brightest from across the country and around the world. It's a site to demonstrate the cutting edge high risk technologies. That's why we're here. 
question I have to ask you, do experimenters and scientists from all over the world to do that? What was it like to be part of this historic venture? The job was fun. I mean, it, it was like, uh, and it was that way for 30 years. It was fun because we oftentimes had to make decisions where we could not go to somebody else and say, what's your experience? They didn't have any experience. Idaho's nuclear pioneers were an awe-inspiring bunch. They astounded the world with their findings while finding their places in history. It's really important that we don't forget the history here. And, and what we did in the past is important even in what we're doing now. But the matter is going to be made a national lab to get all, you name it, they're going to get problems that, that have been facing the nation and the plant everywhere for a long time. And I don't question that they're going to solve them, too. And so it is that we welcome you back to the dawn of the atomic age. Enjoy learning about Idaho's nuclear pioneers and discover what could be in store for the next 50 years as cutting-edge work to develop the next generation of nuclear reactors continues right here in Idaho. subject. Maybe. We will see what makes an atom work. Ahead for the 19th century, scientists discovered the atom. That is, they developed theories about the way atoms behave. They still couldn't see us. Even with the most powerful optical microscopes, we're so small, the head of a pin contains a hundred million billion of us. In fact, everything in the universe is made of atoms. At last, Scientists found the key for unlocking the secrets of the atom. Some very smart fellows experimenting with uranium fired a neutron at its nucleus. The atom split into two smaller atoms. An energy. Now we're getting to the exciting part. Consider the two atoms that are the result of the splitting of a uranium atom. Each has its own binding force, but for some reason, less cosmic glue is needed in the two smaller atoms. A tiny fraction of the binding force is left over after an atom is split. What happens to it? It's released as energy, and this brings us to December 2nd, 1942. For the first time in history, scientists generated energy by splitting atoms. Atomic fission was controlled. A source of abundant energy was discovered inside the atom. When atoms are split, here's what happens. Fission. A single neutron starts a reaction by splitting the uranium atom. Energy is released as heat and radiation and powerful gamma rays, similar to X-rays. Also, free neutrons are driven out of the atom. If enough uranium atoms are present in what we call a critical mass, the free neutrons split other uranium atoms, and their free neutrons split more atoms, billions upon billions of atoms, each release a little of their binding energy. Under the right conditions of critical mass, there can be a lot of energy released very quickly. A chain reaction. But nuclear energy is no good unless we can contain it and make it work for us. We had to learn how to release the energy slowly and safely. And we did that in one of these, a nuclear reactor. To make electricity, we must start with fuel rods, which contain sufficient uranium-235 to maintain a chain reaction. Energy released from the fission of atoms heats the reactor's water, turning it to steam. This mechanical energy drives turbines to make electricity. 
the water also serves as a moderator to slow the neutrons. Oddly enough, the slower they move, the better their chances for nuclear fission. Control rods can slow down and stop the reaction by limiting the number of free neutrons flying about. The reactor continues to heat the water, producing steam, until the uranium-235 is used. Soon, the world's supply of recoverable fossil fuel, coal and oil, will be depleted. Then, we will have to rely on the energy from inside the atom to produce our electricity for our cities and industries. Research scientists continue to look for peaceful applications of nuclear energy. Pioneering research tempered with wisdom will enable us to discover new, safe, useful applications of nuclear technology and to prepare a better world for future generations.